Hello, my name is Sean Dietrich. I'm the president of APSI. Welcome to the second APSI talk. Today, I'm very happy to receive Ananda Kautz, ABL's head of innovation and digital banking and payments. Hello, welcome Ananda. Hello, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> thank you. So today um, we are going to speak uh, about the digitalization of the financial sector and more specifically about the financial institutions. So it's around more than one year ago that a new functionality was imposed uh, by the regulators through the European Commission and the directive on PSD2. It concerns access to bank accounts. Uh, most banks or all the banks had to set up a public API infrastructure on their own or through a hub. Um, today, what are your conclusions on how successful this has been between the banks and the fintechs about the exchange also of client data through the public APIs? Uh, so what's your view today on this topic? So it's true that since the application of the PSD2 uh, in September 2019, there was a wide range of new solutions, payment solutions, and also uh, financial management uh, solutions for corporate clients and retail clients. And uh, this is under adoption for the moment. Uh, customer awareness is really increasing. And we have seen that in the beginning of open banking, we thought it was an evolution for the real like retail clients, the end user clients. And now we see today that corporate clients are also very interested about open banking because they see how they can improve their efficiency uh, and also to, to develop the digitalization. So uh, it's really, I mean, adoption is really going to, to be increased uh, in the coming months and uh, also for corporate clients, I think, a lot uh, in, the, in the future. Um, and you mentioned about, yeah, uh, partnerships and so on. It's true that uh, PSD2, it's, um, it's a game changer regulation because uh, it has actually uh, removed some silos and also redistributed some roles within the financial industry. And uh, yeah, partnerships are very key for the future. And when we, uh, it's also uh, PSD2 bringing open banking to the, driving open banking to the banks and also to the future of open finance. So uh, these partnerships are very key for the future. For the moment, banks are of course open to share their data with uh, other partners, but they're also uh, developing uh, and using the, the data from other uh, APIs uh, for their own development of uh, solutions. Oh. So it's really about the, the development of, uh, let's say, the, the ecosystem. And you mentioned about data, and I think the, really the enabler of, uh, for the future, it will be uh, the, 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 the creation of this interoperable uh, European digital uh, identity that will really boost the, the sharing of data across Europe. So that really will become a, a very good uh, boost for the digitalization uh, at European level. Uh, and also it's about data portability because then the individuals are the ones who are going to decide that I want to share with this and that service provider uh, structured data that's machine readable uh, and that can be used by other service providers. So ma many things have happened and I think that it's just the beginning actually of this change and this move towards open banking. Okay, yes. I, I think it's something um, which is now very positive for the financial institutions knowing that in Luxembourg, um, before 2013, we had the banking secrecy. So we understood from a digital point of view that for them it was the big revolution mm -hmm. from banking secrecy to open banking. But I think we are now in a situation where this is really a game changer and they see the, the, the importance of innovation and uh, open, open banking. I think another point where also in Luxembourg we had for a while some issues with it is the cloud computing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now everywhere in the financial sector. Uh, it's an important topic for banks. Many bank groups who have not their headquarters in Luxembourg are subscribing to cloud solutions, for example, Microsoft M365. And of course, the Luxembourg branches have to follow the recommendations of the headquarters, who could be in Europe, in the European Union, but also outside the Union, could be outside Europe. So it's from time to time complex you have uh, to make um, and because it's, if you have a material use of it, you have to declare it to the CSSF. Uh, so as a such, uh, today, um, how do you see this topic? Are we late? Um, do we have a risk that this will be all outsourced to cloud providers outside Luxembourg? 
and how can we keep uh, this in a way as a business in Luxembourg, meaning for UPSI it's very important that we, we keep uh, digital business in Luxembourg for all our members, mm -hmm. but of course we know that many bank groups have the headquarters outside and there's a risk that um, providers outside Luxembourg linked to the headquarters will get the business. Mm -hmm. So what is your view on in general about the evolution of cloud computing in financial sector in Luxembourg? Thanks for this question. Well, I think that the maturity level between one player and one entity to the other is quite different. Uh, but I think we can say that during the pandemic, the adoption of cloud has been boosted. And also the strategic importance of the cloud has been uh, also developed during the pandemic. And th this is why, because uh, it allows for IT modernization. To the, we talked about partnerships, so it's also about implementing uh, solutions from other service providers with much more agility, and, uh, and that, that's really key for the future. So uh, we believe that Luxembourg has to be as attractive as other jurisdictions related to the cloud and the outsourcing adoption. Uh, while the attractiveness of Luxembourg really stands also about the, the facility to innovate, and uh, we know that outsourcing is usually the first step actually to, uh, to innovation project. So it's really key that we remain uh, competitive in that, in that sense. What ABDL members expect related to the, to the cloud and to outsourcing is that it's uh, straightforward, that uh, there is no delays, that um, things um, are, are easy to implement. Uh, and still that, of course, um, uh, meets the requirements of the CSSF and also the, the, the harmonization at European level. So that's, that's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, you know that the CSSF has published a circular on the outsourcing very recently. Uh, it's still too early to comment this uh, document because it's still under a draft and the ABVL has submitted a, a list of comments to the CSSF and we appreciate this dialogue that we can have uh, ABVL with the CSSF on those kind of uh, major topics. Uh, but of course, we welcome the fact that uh, this, uh, out, this outsourcing um, circular uh, is um, planning to uh, have a national, um, let's say one, one document that is going to be uh, standing for the and uh, replacing, let's say, uh, the, the, the current uh, circulars. So that's, that's a very positive uh, point, together with the fact that notifications, instead of uh, authorizations, uh, prior authorizations are being required. In terms of delays, there was also an improvement in terms of uh, notice delays from six months to three months. Uh, of course, it's still too long for, for us, and we would like the three months to become one month, uh, because in terms of uh, yeah, in those kind of projects, it really has uh, to, 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 to deliver and the innovation cannot wait so much. So, um, but this is an ongoing discussion and uh, we, uh, we hope that um, we'll continue to, to get, have a good dialogue uh, on that sense to, to remain uh, yeah, uh, competitive jurisdiction on that sense. It's really key. Yes, I, I think also our members on our side, they see also that the cloud has another advantage is on security because at the end, you know, if every bank has still its implementation on the bank side, mm -hmm. they need all the experts on databases, on cybersecurity, on firewalls, on uh, yeah. API platforms. And of course, as we know, we have an issue with the talents. Mm -hmm. So this is also something which can help us to be at the top level of technology and innovation mm -hmm. without having all the talents here in the country. Mm -hmm. Because for the moment, I, we at APSI see talents as a major issue in the digitalization. Mm -hmm. So I think cloud will help us to overcome that and stay quite very innovative mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the next yeah. weeks and months. Um, and a last question with a little bit more tricky one is about yeah. the tokenization. <laughs> uh, you know that we are trying to push this for a while and uh, we know that uh, cryptocurrencies versus digital bank uh, uh, currencies, digital, uh, central bank digital currencies is a hot topic for the moment, stable coins and so on. Then everything around crypto assets, uh, the MICA uh, regulation, so the crypto asset uh, regulation of the EU. So many people see and meaning when we meet people from outside Luxembourg or people who want to come in Luxembourg, they all tell us we are quite late on this. Uh, our neighbors like France have uh, already an, a regulation called PACT. Mm -hmm. So we, we are in a way very astonished why Luxembourg is not moving on. Uh, how, how do you see this from an ABBL perspective? 
because many of your banks have headquarters outside Luxembourg. So if Luxembourg is not proposing this regulation, the headquarters will be in a jurisdiction in Europe mm -hmm. who will propose it. As a such, we will get the competition and we have an issue of losing a lot of business. Mm -hmm. So what is today the position of the ABBL concerning this lateness on, on everything which is crypto or DLT, let's say? It's true that tokenization is going to uh, have a huge impact in the way that we invest. And also uh, we have seen the huge interest uh, for crypto assets in the past few years. And that's also something that we witness at ABBL because our members have a huge interest about the digital euro, about what's going on about the Mika regulation, about the DLT uh, development and so on. So uh, this has been kind of a pillar that we are working very close uh, on, the, on those files. Uh, to make sure that uh, our voice in Luxembourg is also heard. So, uh, on the, for example, on the digital era, we have participated in the ECB consultation. Uh, and um, by the way, we welcome uh, the decision uh, uh, that was taken to, uh, yeah, to move on with the experimentation phase on the digital era. So that's great news. And on the MICA, so on the MICA, so the markets uh, the, in crypto assets uh, regulation proposed by European Commission, together with the Delity pilot regime, we have been in touch uh, via EBF and also locally with the Ministry of Finance uh, to really develop some, uh, some parts of the, the amendments on this text. What we, um, what we agree is that such kind of technological developments uh, should be done at European level. Uh, at some stage, because um, it, given the, the, the structure of the Luxembourgish economy and also the reliability that we have with other jurisdictions, uh, it's quite important to have a harmonized um, approach toward those kind of new uh, activities. And, um, and that's really something that we support. So we hope that the MICA is going to be uh, implemented uh, 2023 to 2024. And of course, in two years in this sector, many things can happen. Uh, but um, but the European approach, it's probably the one that makes the most sense uh, to Luxembourg uh, as well. Yeah. Let's say in, in an area where Luxembourg is very strong today is the funds industry, you see it. At that time, I remember, well, we have been a first mover. Mm -hmm. And we in EPSI, we regret in a way that we have not been an, a first mover on um, crypto assets mm -hmm. uh, like, like Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Perhaps Malta is not a good example, mm -hmm. uh, even France, now Germany. And we are a little bit reluctant and we believe that if we want to keep our banking sector competitive mm -hmm. and continue to make good money with it, this will be an important point. And again, we, we don't like the discussion saying, OK, because you like crypto, you are against traditional business. Mm -hmm. I think we should keep the traditional business mm -hmm. to the maximum, yes. start in parallel the crypto, mm -hmm. and perhaps one day the market will turn, yeah. but then we are ready. But today we are not ready. So we are saying we, we bet too much on the traditional business. Mm -hmm. and we are still not in a phase where crypto is possible in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. And so this is something where we believe perhaps we should have another discussion mm -hmm. and we should try a little bit to push the Ministry of Finance, uh, the CSSF, the central bank to help us to move on. on. On digital currency, yes, it will come. But as you know, this week, the Sweden, they launched the e-krona, mm -hmm. so which is now a digital currency. Yes. So I think there are people in the European Union mm -hmm. who are first movers. Mm -hmm. And we would encourage as APSI that, meaning Luxembourg will perhaps also try to be more of us. So that will be the next talk, right? Yes. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you. Thank you.